the informal Dora. Right? On, the, on the topic of confidence, uh, personally, I don't think I was grown up, I, I didn't grow up as a confident person. And also there's a difference between quiet confidence and then loud confidence, right? So then uh, either I might have grew, grown up as a diffident, non-confident person, or I could have been a quite, quietly confident person, right? Just um, realizing that I've put in the work, I've put in the time, and uh, I have the skills, but, you know, just not being naturally confident. But over the years, what I have developed is an earned confidence, which is like when you put in the hard work, you put in the time, then, uh, you know, you become confident, um, but that's more over time. That's what, what happens, right? I mean, speaking from personal experience, I think we were brought up in a, in a, in a system in society where, um, where soft spokenness was valued over, you know, being too uh, overtly exuding, you know, too much confidence. And I think also we were told to always take a back seat. In fact, our school's motto was others before self. So that's, that pervades our thinking, right? So it's not just in one aspect. Others before self is like, it could be an all pervasive concept, right? It doesn't mean that we will attain that level of uh, uh, spiritual, you know, uh, accomplishment or attainment, but I think the seed gets planted in our mind very early on that you have to take a back seat to other people's interests. In terms of the kinds of cases that we have, the clientele, uh, we have immigration cases, we have family cases, also called uh, you know matrimonial cases. We have a lot of uh, residential real estate cases, and we have some small business cases. And then we, we have some contract uh, law type of cases. And I think um, family and immigration, those are the two main areas where our immigrant communities need the most uh, help with legal representation. Yeah. Uh, during the pandemic, I did place the team above myself. Uh, because when times, this is what had the reason, the way I reason it to myself, is uh, when times were good, I was having it good. So when times are bad, um, I can afford to have it bad, you know? So um, that's how I look at it. So uh, that's been my philosophy, you know? And uh, yeah, and it's, it's good to know that, you know, it's, this is the best thing, right? When you can do good for your team, but they're mindful of it, they're mindful of, you know, sacrifices that I make on an individual level and they're able to reciprocate you know so it's that uh, you know when I give there is no expectation that someone will give back but then it's uh, you know another human being on the other end who, who knows you know who's mindful of the sacrifices that I'm making as the leader of this organization in, in a sense it's a family right because it's the family uh, and then you know it's a reality that, you know, pre-pandemic, I was spending more time in the office than at home. <laughs> so it, it is a, a family to a large extent. And then uh, you get to know people and then, uh, yeah, you spend so much time with them, right? Uh, I mean, the best is where other people will recognize what you're doing. And case in point, we have <laughs> this, right? Uh, the office of Tibet uh, gave us a certificate uh, just to, uh, recognizing all the work that we've been doing within the community. Uh, you know, pro bono helping uh, political prisoners and doing a lot of pro bono work for um, nonprofit organizations. Yeah, that's what I think. The best is when, when, an, when the Office of Tibet or when you know, people within the community will recognize the amount we're doing behind the scenes because that's the work we do.